everyone. Today we're going to learn how to put a button back that has popped. And we're going to try to do it from the front side of the chair, which if we can accomplish that, saves us a ton of time. Of course, as usual, we need some specialized tools. And so our first attempt is going to be through the front. And um, what that requires is a German needle, a clasp that fits into the German needle, some twine, and this is a specific button twine or nylon twine. Make sure that when you pick up a piece of twine that there's no cotton around it, like there was there, we just clean that up. Make sure it's nice and clean. We're going to thread this, and we're ready to show you how to put a button from the face of the chair with the German needle. So the requirements for going through the front of the chair with a popped button, German needle, a clasp, a twine that's about 36 inches long, and when you when you thread it, it will be about 18 inches long each each end. And so let's put the clasp in. See if you can see this. This goes in like so. It needs to be flat. You need to make sure your trigger isn't all the way down. It needs to it needs to nestle in there nicely. Say. Okay, we hold the clasp until we're going to put it through the opening here. Let's get our tuft to let's get this in place. Okay, we'll hold that until we get it in, and we're going to push it. Now, this this requires a little bit of a strength at first to push it through cotton. Now, it's really important. I'm just going to turn the chair around just to show you something. You need enough space in between your button and the back of the chair because the needle could go through. And if you're trying to repair a piece of furniture, you don't want that to happen. So this is where you have to be really careful. So I can I can still I can feel the needle point already coming through here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to angle it a little bit just to get a little bit more space for my clasp. My clasp is gonna be released and then hopefully hold on to enough solid ground in there so that we can make a slip knot, and I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, let's see if it's worked. And the way to release the clasp within the channel of the German needle is to push. And I, I think I felt it go in. Now you have to release the German needle because the clasp and the thread should be free. Okay, that's pot's worked. Now here's the pot that you need to make sure that this is solid enough to do your button work. Okay, let's just see if you take both both twines and pull towards you and hopefully it's hooked on something in the chair which which we've accomplished. Now the second thing that you want to do is make sure that you have a slip. Okay, because this is a slip knot. So we're going to go like so. Now this really worked out beautifully. Uh, sometimes you're doing this, you might have two, three, four, or five times where you need to do this before the clasp actually takes. So you, 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 this is really good. It's worked the first time. So I, I have a good slip on that. So now we're going to show you how to do a slip knot. So it's loose, which is good. It's, the clasp is working. It's firm back there, and it's working around the loop of the clasp, and so it slips. So now we're going to thread one side. I, I'm right-handed, so I, I thread the right the right one, okay? That makes a difference when you're doing your knot. I'm just pushing in there a little bit. So the knot, and I think um, a lot of people who are in scouts might know this knot. Okay, so we have our button looped on one thread, not both of them, that's important, just one thread. And we know that it's loose. Okay, you're right, I'm right-handed, so my right thread should be a little bit longer, maybe a couple, four inches longer. Okay, and I'm working close to the button here, about six inches from the button, and I have my, my thumbs and my index fingers working for me. Okay, with my left index finger, I'm gonna pull under that, that bottom thread, and I'm gonna work it this way, twist it over. You probably can slow down your YouTube video just to get this. Okay, with, uh, hold this tight. I'm holding the knot tight here. And I've created, this is what you're creating, this little loop, this double loop here, this double turnover, if you want to call it that. Okay, and with the right thread, I'm going to throw it over there, like so, over the top, around the bottom, and then through the loop. 
nearest your finger. Now you have a choice here, you can go here, you can go here, but it's the loop nearest your finger, okay? You're still holding this tight on your left finger, left fingers. Okay, I'm pulling this, and now I'm gonna undo my index finger, and what you should have, if you've done it right, is the figure eight, okay? And this is important, if you've done the figure eight properly, your left twine is what slips. Your right twine, you could pull it just a little bit more if you want to make a small eight. See that? Small eight. And then don't go too far though, because this is also what knots, knots it, okay? And that's important later. So this is our slip, which is the important part. It's the only thing that gets this button tight. You can't do it any other way. You can you could put a button back and try to hand sew it in with a curved needle or something, but it will never be as tight as these other ones. That's what makes this special, this needle in this process. So what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna help it. I'm gonna pull this as much as I can, and I'm gonna help it a little bit by pushing in and then pushing in this way. That's as tight as I'm gonna get it. So you notice how it might not be quite as tight as the other ones. I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tie this off. So that's as tight as I'm gonna get it, right? Okay. And then very close, I'm gonna take my scissors and very closely go right to the edge of the twine. And I'm gonna, with the tip of my scissors, poke, poke the thread in. Okay, so you can see I can see that it's just, I'd like it a little bit tighter. So I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to try to, you know, take my pleats and work the pleats back. I'm going to try to, that's close, but you can take it and twist it also. And to get a better fit. I think that's the best we're going to get that. Okay. Okay, so what to do when a button pops and you can't use the German needle? Well, you have to use a button needle. You have to use the same twine. You have to use the button that popped. Redo the, the whole. <laughs> Done. Okay, ready? So what to do when a button pops out of a chair and you can't use the German needle or the easy way. So we have to do it the hard way. We don't want to ruin any of the fabric, so we have to be careful. So we have to take the outside back off and anything that's under the outside back in order to gain entry so that the needle comes through and we can make a slip knot from the back of the chair. It's as hot as it sounds, so let's get going. So you, you have to be a little bit of a detective here to figure out how they close the outside. Now since the button is near, the, near the, this side of the outside back, I'm hoping that I can just open up this portion and, and use that to pull my needle through. So when I, when I look here, I suspect that this was hand stitched, and the way I can tell is that we have this little puckering action going. So in a way, it's easier to, to cut um, than it would be if it was closed with the metal ply grip, they call. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully see if I can undo one of these stitches, because we need to save the fabric, right? And I'm gonna pull, as I pull gently. It is a velvet, so it will tear. Okay, so actually I think we're going to get away with it a little easier, but we need to show you how to do a hand stitch after this is done. Okay, I think that might, I'm just going to clip another couple of stitches here. That may be enough. So when we look inside here, I feel like Indiana Jones. I look in. <laughs> you have a headlamp. And I see, <laughs> I see that was our off, off, off stage uh, intern, Gisela, offering her comments. She said I should use a headlamp, but I don't need a headlamp. I'm not that blind yet. So I, I pulled out this cotton ball that's used to put in between our slip knot, which I'm, I, I love to recycle, so I'm going to recycle it. I actually have here, too, I have the old slip knot with the old twine. Isn't that great? It's all knotted up. You can't see how they did it, but let's lose that and put this here. I'm going to turn the chair back. Okay. I'm going to thread the button so that I have both ends coming through at an equal, equal distance. 
Then my button needle, the button needle, I'm going to thread my button needle with both ends going through. I'm going to go in about six inches, just like so. Okay, now hopefully I'm going to be able to get this through and through that opening in the back where we've just undid. Okay, let's give it a try. Okay, this is really a uh, caution people when they're using button needles, make sure there's nobody behind you. Make sure when you pull it, you're not standing in the back of it right directly in the path of the needle because what happens is needles tend to get stuck in cotton as you're pulling it through. Now, pulling it through this way, I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, we make sure that we have enough, but not too much of the, of the twines coming through here. Like I said, about five or six inches is what you want. I managed to get it through uh, opening at that. So this is what I want to caution against. Don't go like this and pull. And when, when, make sure you're away this way when you're pulling. And make sure there's nobody walking by you. Make sure there's nobody near you. Because what happens is you're pulling so hard. A lot of times you're pulling so hard and then it lets go. And, you, and you, your carry through really goes fast. So be careful. This is a very sharp point. So now I have both twines coming through. I'm going to give it a pull with that. And we're going to bring it back. And we're going to do our slip knot from here. But make sure, this is the first thing you do, is to make sure that you're, you're, you're free of any debris, like cotton, horsehair, burlap. The key word here is slip, slip knot, slip. So it has to slip. Okay, what I'm going to do is, as a right-handed person, I'm going to give myself a little bit more twine on the right, because that's your tying twine. Okay, I'm going to really slow down my, my knot making here, just so you guys can slow it down even more when you... So I'm right-handed, so my right twine, after you know it slips, is going to be about four or five inches longer than the left, and you're working about six inches away from where the knot's going to go, or where the button is. And then what I'm going to do is, it, thumbs and index fingers, so with my left index finger, I'm going to try to wrap it around the right twine and I'm going to twist like that. <coughs> and then I'm going to throw this twine over the top, it comes around the bottom, and it goes through the loop nearest your finger. And go through there. And then you can release it to the left. Don't, um, don't release down here. And then when you're done, you have a figure eight. Okay? And then we're going to pull this just a little bit so they get a small A, okay? Now we need to add cotton. It's the difference between the front and the back, right? Back we didn't have cotton. We had a class pole like that. But this needs cotton in between so your button doesn't wander out. Sometimes you have to let go of the twine in order to get your button in cotton in there. So notice how I just pulled the right. I'm pulling the right. Try, try not to do that. It's the left that's the slip. Okay, I just made a smaller eight. At some point, you know, if you do that hard enough, you won't be able to do the slip at this point. Okay, so I'm just going to turn the chair so that you can see this going in. Watch this. This is kind of cool. It goes in by itself. And then you can kind of help it along too. That's what really gets it tight towards the end. You pull, you're, you're, you're pushing as you're pulling with your twine. Pushing this way and pulling with your twine. Okay, so that looks good from the other side. I'm just going to get the final knot. I'm going to cut the ends. Let's just check it before we do our work. That looks good. Now we have to restitch this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this about every couple of inches. I usually pin into the See this cardboard tacking tape? I usually pin with the fold into the cardboard tacking tape. And notice my pins are this way, not out like this. If they're out like this or this way, your twine is probably going to pick the, pick the uh, pins up. You don't want to do that. Okay, so this is almost ready to, to be hand stitched. I'll show you how to do that. 
So our length of repair has increased, I would say, at least double in this case. Could have been a lot worse. Our button could have been in the center of the chair. In that case, we would have had to undo more of the outside back, which would have extended the time of the repair. And of course, for the, those of you who are trying to start out in your own shop, time is money, right? So you have to, when you're estimating jobs, you have to estimate the time, the length of time. That's what determines the, the, the amount that you're gonna get for a particular job. So you have to get a good sense of, of this. Um, uh, the repair that we did on the front with the German needle, a lot of times that can be done in the house. So that saves, saves your customer money and, you, and, and that's always good too. Uh, but for jobs like this, sometimes you have to take it to the shop so you can see it gets a little bit more involved, you know, the tools. And so let's uh, show you how to hand stitch. So I'm right-handed, believe it or not, it makes a big difference. A right-handed person would be easier for me to come this way left-handed person this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to try to get right near the bottom of that welt. And I'm going to put a knot at the end of my twine. I'm going to cut it near the knot. I'm just going to show you the stitch in a minute. I'm just going to get this started here. Notice what I did with my, my needle. I, I stuck it in here as I was pulling down because um, it will pull, it will want to pull down with you. And it's, it's important to stabilize it. So for, for those who aren't sure of themselves, see what I just did with the pin to get that tight? Um, you might want to put more pins in. Make sure that this this is as tight as you can get it because it just makes it easier to stick. I know there's, there's a little bit of a challenge with this fabric being on there so long it's loosened up. So you really don't want to stitch a fabric that's loose. That's a problem. I think we'll be able to make it up down there, but let's just see how this goes. So. A lot, this is called a blind stitch, meaning that after you make the stitch, you shouldn't see the thread. That's what that means. Some people call it a back stitch. It's kind of important to know that at each transition from the outside back to the welt and, and from the welt to the outside back, this is the key. You need to be about three thread widths behind or about a sixteenth of an inch, okay? So that's what locks it. I'll show you this right now. Watch this. That's what locks it, and that creates that little pucker that we saw before we undid this. Okay, again, the transition here from the welt to the outside back. About a sixteenth of an inch behind. I'm at the fold. I'm trying to be right at the fold where they were. And then the pull. Pull down, right? We're just going to carry this all the way down. Sharp curved needle is important. You could cheat a little bit too by coming down a little bit further. It's okay because um, I want people to know that I hand stitched this. I want to see a little puckering. It, that was a tradition in, in upholstery where um, we professional upholsters, I can make this just look like a ply grip or a machine did it. But I really don't. I'm not interested in that. I want to, I want people to know that I took the time to hand stitch this. So I'm going to, this is just how fast the other guy did. So as a matter of fact, that's, that's looking too good right there. But, you know, they go fast and, and they don't care so much about pockets. Or we, traditionally, it wasn't it wasn't supposed to look pristine. We're so used to things, see, I, that's okay. We're so used to things looking pristine in, in furniture or machine made. It takes, I think it takes the character. I use character in one class, I use soul. It takes the soul out of a piece of furniture and the people laughed at that, but <laughs> maybe we shouldn't say that. But 
it certainly, I think, takes takes the character out of the piece. I'm trying to duplicate what they did down here. You see the stitching even overrides the piping. Uh, they even have a piece down here. So I'm trying to recreate the original because the customer doesn't want, they want to keep the old fabric so, and the old style. So they have an appreciation for for the old school way, right? Notice that we didn't use the staple gun or any pneumatic or power tools, you know? We, this is all done by hand. So I'm kind of proud of the fact that we can, if the lights go out, I could just put a couple of candles on or something, light a couple of candles and still keep working, no matter what. If I had a treadle machine, uh, which I don't right now, but I used to, that wouldn't stop me from sewing either if the lights went out. I think that's kind of nice about our business. Candle days. <laughs> so here I go. And I can speed it up a little bit here too, just to show you. This is what this is what originally they were doing. They were, they were moving. They, were, they didn't have ply grip, that metal material that you all you all may know. They didn't have pneumatic staple guns, so things had to go a little faster. You know, there's other things in the shop that need to be sewn. When I teach uh, hand stitching to my students, they do such a good job, and I, I, I tease them. I say, put a couple of puckers in that, nobody will know you hand stitched it. <laughs> We're almost done, almost to where we, we cut it, but I want to extend this just a little bit more. Tuck that thread in. This way. That's the old thread. One more stitch should do it. I gotta pull this way and a little tension on that. Cut it and we're done. Well, there you have it. There you have it. Two ways with two different types of needle to repair a pop button. See you next time.